Hi guys, I'm back with another corner to corner crochet blanket pattern for you and this one is mushrooms. So I'm so in love with it. I hope you guys like it. I'm just gonna show you really quick what it looks like. It's got a little mushroom guy up there. Here's this one. I know it's hard to show the whole thing in the video. So I'm gonna try my best. There's the little middle one. And then we got three little mushrooms down here on the bottom and then my favorite little fat little mushroom guy down here in the corner. So I used Lion Brand's Let's Get Cozy Chenille Appeal yarn for this. This is what it looks like. Um, all the exact yardage requirements are listed on my blog. So I have the free pattern available on my blog. And then the kit is available and you guys know I always recommend the kit. It's such a good deal, especially if you grab it on sale, which they have sales all the time and you can grab the kit and then they throw in the free printable pattern for you. So you get a digital link to my pattern, which includes the written row by row as well as the graph. Um, so they'll email that to you. You can also customize your yarn colors when you get the kit. Um, so they have all of those options available. I'll link to that in the, des the description. Um, but if you just want to follow along with the free pattern that is on my blog and I'll link to that as well. In this video, I am only making a small little tiny swatch to give you guys an example. Um, or if you need a little bit of extra help, if this is maybe your first time doing corner to corner, I will show you how to start off the blanket how to bring in colors and change colors, how to work the corner of this particular blanket, and then how to work the second corner of this blanket, and then of course how to fasten off and finish your blanket. So I will do that all within in the video. Obviously this video does not cover the whole blanket, it's just one tiny little swatch, so it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it so you can make your own cute little mushroom blanket. Um, I also have the printable version of this pattern in my Etsy shop and Ravelry shop. So I'll link to those. And I think that's all you need to know for this um, design. All the information and links will be on my blog post and then I'll put everything in the description as well. Um, and again, this is just a little swatch. So make sure you're following along with the pattern on my blog or the kit or however um, you wanna go along with it. But don't just watch the video and think you're gonna get a blanket cause you want it's just a tiny little square and I'm showing you how to do the basic details of it. So. Um, I think that's it and you guys can check out the blog post for all the info um, and I hope you guys like it. I like it so much. I hope you guys do too and I will see you guys. So for this blanket I used Lion Brand's Let's Get Cozy Chenille Appeal yarn and you're going to need five different colors of this. Um, all the exact yardage is listed on my blog post so make sure you go check that out so you can get the correct amount and then you're just going to need it in these five different colors it's just a worsted weight yarn and then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors and then a needle to weave in your ends so to start off the blanket you're going to create a slip knot and then just go ahead and insert your hook and pull tight to secure and we're going to be beginning with row one of the graph so the very bottom corner on the lower right hand side of the graph and you start off by chaining six so just yarn over and pull through a total of six times and then you're going to be working your first double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. You're gonna do this in the fourth chain from the hook, the fifth chain from the hook, and in this sixth chain here. So a total of three double crochet stitches, and this creates your very first square. So to begin row two, you can just go ahead and turn your work. And then we're going to start off the exact same way by chaining six. So just yarn over and pull through a total of six times. And then just like before, you're going to work a double crochet stitch into the fourth chain from the hook. So you can find that fourth chain, insert your hook and work a double crochet. And then in the chain directly next to it, work a second double crochet. And then in the last chain, work a third double crochet. So we've chained six and then worked three double crochet stitches for the first square on the second row. 
So after you have the first square made, you're going to slip stitch over into the square from row one. So in the chain three space, just insert your hook into that spot and slip stitch in and then chain three this time. So now we have three instead of six. So you slip stitch in, chain three, and work three double crochet all into the same spot. So you're working these all into the chain three space from the square in the row below. So that completes row two. We have row one with one square and row two with two squares. And then you can go ahead and turn your work. And now we will begin row three. And you're gonna start it off the same way as we did before. Start off by chaining six and then work a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And again, these are our increase squares. So the square that I am doing is what we do on the outer edges of the blanket when we're making it larger. So you always start off with the chain six when we are increasing. And then when we end up getting to the corners, that's when you start decreasing. And I will show you how to do that later on in the video. So you do your increase square and then slip stitch over into the chain three space of the next square, chain three and work three double crochet into that spot. And this is just the regular square that you're going to do throughout the blanket when you are on the um, insides of the blanket and not on the edge of the blanket. So you just slip stitch over, chain three, three double crochet. That's one square and that is also one square on the graph as well. So again, I've done one, two, and we gotta make our third one because we are in the third row. So just slip stitch over and then chain three and then work three double crochet to finish off this row. So that completes row three and then row four is going to start off the same way as well by just turning your work and starting off with a chain six. And then I will show you guys how to bring in colors and to change colors as well, um, the way that you're going to be doing it in this blanket. Okay, so now we are starting row three and you're going to do the same thing, chain six. Again, this is an increased square. This is what we start off with on the um, edges of our blanket as long as the blanket is increasing and not decreasing. So you always start off with a chain six and then you work your double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then a second double crochet into the fifth and then your third double crochet into the sixth chain. So cha chain six and then work your three double crochet. And now you're going to slip stitch over into that previous square. So in that chain three space, just work a slip stitch. And then now you will only be chaining three and then working three double crochet all into the same spot. So this is just a regular square and this is what you're going to be doing throughout the pattern um, on the insides of the blanket and not on the edges. So this is just a normal square. Again, slip stitch over into the next chain three space from the square in the previous row, chain three, and then work three double crochet all into the same spot. So we have our increased square that we started with and then just these um, regular squares here. And then that completes row three. And then same thing for row four, when you're starting off, you're gonna start off with that increased square. So you can see um, row one has one square, row two has two, row three has three. And every time you do a row, it adds on a square count of one more. So row four will have four squares. Um, so you just keep going just like this throughout the entire blanket until you reach the um, corners and then I'll show you guys what to do at the corners but for now I'm going to show you how to bring in different colored yarns and how to switch your colors throughout. Okay so here is our graph and I'm just going to line it up so you can see where we are at. We did row one, row two, and row three and that is how you match it with the graph. You can um, make sure you are on the right track by matching the rows and the square count and your colors and all of that. So I always recommend following along with the graph as well as the written pattern just to double check to make sure your squares are correct. And then again we are reading our pattern starting from left to right and then right to left. 
So all of the odd numbered rows you read from left to right and then the even numbers you read right to left. So for example, here on row eight, you would read right to left. We have five white squares and then we need to bring in some yellow here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to bring in this second color and then switch back to the white as well. Um, so again, I'm making just a small swatch compared to the regular blanket. So this is going to be different than what the normal blanket will look like, but I'm just going to show you a little swatch and some tips on changing colors. Okay, so we will start off this row as normal with an increased square. Um, so this is what you'll be doing when you're on row eight. Again, don't forget, I'm just working a little swatch here. So when you're doing this pattern, you need to make sure you are following along with the graph and the written pattern and not just this tutorial. I'm only doing a small little swatch so you guys can see um, the different techniques on how to make this blanket and how to do the rows and the color changing and all of that. So we have our first square here and now I'm gonna show you how to bring in um, our second color. So I highly recommend getting little bobbins or clothespins or wooden dowels, anything along the lines where you can just wrap your yarn around it and keep it organized. So what we wanna do is keep our, our, our yarn as organized as possible. And because of the different places throughout the pattern where you switch colors, it's much easier to have the balls separated instead of trying to work it from a skein and getting it all tangled. So for example, you can see here on this mushroom, there's 22 yellow squares and every 20 squares in this pattern equals five grams of this yarn that I'm using. So if you have a kitchen scale, you can weigh out five grams of yarn for every 20 squares. So because that yellow portion has 22, I weighed out just over five grams um, for this portion of the blanket. That way I know exactly how much I need. I don't have to guess and I, I know that I can always pick up the yarn, the rest of the yellow yarn, if there's a different area throughout that um, I can put on its own bobbin as well. So you'll want to have a bobbin of white and then you'll need a bobbin of yellow. And then when the pink starts in the next row, you'll need to bring in a bobbin of pink as well. So I recommend counting the squares and then weighing your yarn on a kitchen scale to know exactly how much you need. You don't have to do it this way, but it is a lot easier and keeps your yarn much more organized um, if you know exactly what you need and it keeps it from getting tangled. But if not, you can keep it attached to the skein as well. So instead of doing this last um, yarn over pull through with the white yarn, when you're changing colors, you wanna drop the current yarn color on that last double crochet and bring in your new yarn color and just place it on the hook. And then just go ahead and pull through doing that last pull through with the new color. And then you can kind of tug the tails down a little bit to make sure it's secure. And then that is now your working yarn. So you just slip stitch over into the next square as normal. And then the gold color will be the yarn that you work with. So then you just continue with the regular squares doing a chain three and then working three double crochet all into the same spot. So that is how you pick up um, another color um, and bring in a color to the blanket. So it's really easy. You just drop the current yarn, do that last pull through and use the new color. Um, so here I am using the gold color and I'm going to work up two squares um, like you would do for that row eight in the pattern. You work two squares but then you need to switch back to white. And because the white that we are using is now on the other end of the blanket where we dropped it, we're gonna wanna bring in a new um, bobbin or ball of white yarn. So again, um, for the white portions of the blanket, our main color, you do not have to um, wrap those around a bobbin. I, because you use so many skeins of the white yarn, I just use separate full um, skeins of the yarn if it's in a big chunk. So if you have like a hundred squares, like tons of squares where you know you're not gonna have to um, detach that white, I just recommend keeping it on the skein. It's only for the smaller portions of yarn where I like to weigh it out and put it on a bobbin. So again, you can see where I just did that last pull through with the white color. So now this is a new strand of white 
Um, and then you just finish your square like normal, do the slip stitch over, chain three, three double crochet, and that completes this row here. So now we have three colors attached. We have that first white, the gold, and then now this second skein of white. Um, so that is why it is really nice to have it all attached to bobbins and stuff like that when you get into uh, multiple colors you can easily move the yarn around i also have a little stand for mine and that keeps it even more organized so i definitely recommend doing that when you have several yarn um, changes okay so now i'm going to show you how to do different um yarn color changes when your yarn is already attached and you just need to switch back and forth from different colors so again this is just a little swatch here this is not any part of the pattern i'm just showing you random and different ways that you may see throughout the pattern of changing colors and how to go about doing that okay so we've started the next row and i did my increase square and now i'm going to show you how to switch back to the gold so let's say the graph says to um, you have your white square and then you need to switch to the gold. You are just going, if you're in a position where you're right next to the gold from the row below like this, I recommend not cutting the yarn. You just want to pick that yarn back up and do that last pull through like I did here. And you can see it stretches this um, float across the square, but we're just going to crochet directly over it. So you just slip stitch into the chain three space like you would for any normal square. And then this float, we're just gonna work our stitches right over it so it hides it underneath the square. That helps you from having to cut and join, cut and join, and you'll have a lot more um, ends to weave in if you, um, if you were to cut it instead of just picking it up and pulling it over like I did here. So I just picked it up, stretched it over, making sure not to pull it too tight. You want it to lay um, nice and even with that square from the row below. And then you can see here, it's just hidden right underneath. So on the right side of the blanket, you cannot even um, tell that it's pulled over like that. So that is my first tip on um, switching colors. And you will see this one throughout um, the blanket. You'll have to do this one several times. So just keep that in mind. And you can do that, do it on both sides, whether you're facing the wrong side or the right side, you can do um, that same little trick so you don't have to cut and join. Okay, so I am going to now show you how to change back to um, the white color up here and a different way um, if you're in a different spot on how to change colors. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, one last square of this gold and then we will switch back to the white. Okay, so don't forget to tuck your yarn on the same side, all of the tails. So you can see I pulled my yarn of the gold over and it's under my thumb. And then I'm just going to pick this white back up and then do this last pull through. So you can see it kind of stretches along here um, and it blends in really nicely on the back side of the blanket. So that is another way to just keep going and not have to cut and join and have all those extra ends to weave in. So I just picked it up and brought it up. Um, and because you're doing all of this on the wrong side of the blanket, all of those um, little spots where we do that are on the other side. And I'll show you at the end of this video that it actually looks completely fine too on the wrong side as well. It really blends in um, well with this fuzzy yarn. So that is another way to um, join in yarn so that you're not having to cut and join. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what to do when you reach this first corner down here at row 60. So again, you want to remember that we read our crochet, this particular um, corner to corner pattern is um, left to right for the odd numbers and right to left for the even numbers. So when you're coming back down this way and you reach the very last square of row 60, that is your corner square. So that is going to be um, the very last um, square that you make in that corner and then from um, that square on out you're going to be decreasing on that side of the blanket so that means no more chaining six on that side so 
We're gonna pretend that this is row 60 here of our corner to corner. So you start off um, with a normal increase square because again, you are on the right side of the blanket. So on the um, right hand side, which is still increasing, you don't start decreasing on this side until you reach row 68. So start off with a regular increase square and then you can go ahead and just work your normal squares across and I'm going to show you some more color changing here before we get to the end. Remember to do the last yarn over with the new color so I just dropped my white to the back of the work now because it's on we want all of the ends to be on the same side and then I just do that last pull through with the gold tug down on the tails a little bit and now the gold is my working yarn. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that white yarn hanging and then my gold yarn is my working yarn. So I slip stitch over into the next square, chain three, and then work three double crochet to complete a regular square. I'm going to keep going with the gold here until I reach the last square where I'm going to switch back to the white and show you how to do the corner. Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to the white. So just drop the gold and then pull through with the white. And then again, this is our corner stitch. So slip stitch over, chain three, and then work three double crochet. And that is the very corner stitch of the mushroom blanket. So we are ending on the corner stitch. And so that means when we turn our work, we no longer have to increase on this side. So I'll show you guys how to um, work another square by decreasing. So you can go ahead and turn your work, but this time we are not going to be chaining six. So now since we reached the corner, you're just going to slip stitch into the top of the double crochet, slip stitch into the top of the second double crochet, and then slip stitch into the top of the third double crochet. So we've slip, slip stitched up the side and now just slip stitch into the chain three space of that last square that we made, chain three, and then continue with three double crochet. So it's super easy. You are um, just slip stitching up the side and then working a regular square instead of doing that chain six. And because that was our corner square there at the bottom, now whenever you are on this side of the blanket um, and you know you've already done the corner, you do not have to increase anymore. So each time you reach that side, you do the same thing that I just showed you and I will um, show you again in the next rows. So, okay, here's another way to change colors. I drop my white, making sure it's on the same side as my ends, and then just pick up the gold and do that last pull through, and then work a chain three and three double crochet. So just our regular um, squares and doing these easy color changings um, that I've been showing you. So continue with this across the row, and I will show you how to change colors again. And then I will also show you how to um, do the other corner as well. Okay, and here's what our blanket looks like laid out flat. So that very corner square right there is um, the end of row 60 at the corner, which is that square right there. So you can go ahead and you can cross reference with your graph in your written pattern to make sure you are on track. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to work across this row with our normal squares um, that I've already been showing you. And then when I get to the end of this row, we are going to um, use that as an example for the other corner of the blanket. So I'm going to show you what to do for the corner at row 68 on the upper right-hand side of the blanket. Um, and how to start doing the decrease on the, that end. It's going to be slightly different than the first side. Okay, so here I am coming up to the end of the row. I'm going to work my last square um, at the very end here as normal. So go ahead and slip stitch in and then chain three and then work those three double crochet into it. Okay. 
Okay, so I've worked my way across the row and I've turned my work and now the start of this next row, we're going to work as row 68. And then again, row 68 is our corner square. So this next um, square that we are making will be our final um, corner and the last increase on this side of the blanket. So row 68 is a even row, so we are working right to left and that very first square is the corner. So it's just going to be a regular increase square. So this is the last increase of the whole blanket and then we will be decreasing on both sides from here on out. So work your chain six and then your three double crochet as normal. And then just go ahead and slip stitch into the next square and then continue on with your regular squares for this row. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of the row here. So I'm just going to finish with this gold color. And again, we are decreasing on this side still. Um, so to continue to do that, you just slip stitch into the square from the row below, turn your work, and then just as before, you're gonna slip stitch up the side. So work one slip stitch into the first double crochet, one slip stitch into the second and one into the third. And then again, you are going to slip stitch into the chain three space of the last square that you made. So we slip stitched into the square, turned, did our slip stitch up the side, slip stitch into the chain space, and then just start with a regular square by chaining three and working three double crochet all into the same spot. And now that we have made our corner square on the other side in this row, I will show you guys how to decrease on that end as well because we are decreasing on both sides now. So you can go ahead and work um, your way across doing the regular squares. Okay, I'm still working my way across this row, but I wanted to point out that there's going to be some instances where you have to cut your yarn and join in again. You can see here, if I'm changing back to white, it does stretch the yarn all the way across the block like that. And you can leave it like that if the float doesn't bother you, but this one is a little bit more noticeable than some of the other color changing areas. Um, so if you do find yourself in this situation where you're having to switch yarn um, and it stretches all the way across the block you can just cut your yarn just like I did here and then take the yarn and just join in again um, where you are currently at and then you're just going to have a couple of extra ends to weave in by doing that but this prevents um, the float from stretching all the way across the square so it's personal preference you can go ahead and float it across if you want just make sure you're not pulling it too tightly we don't want the squares to curl up or fold up under themselves and then have it look all wonky and crazy Okay, so now I'm coming up to the end of the row here, and because that square that we made was our corner square, we do not have to increase anymore. So just slip stitch into it, and then go ahead and turn your work. So this will be just like you have been doing on the other side. Um, go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the next three double crochets. So one and then two and then into the third and then of course you're going to slip stitch into that chain space of the square that you just made. So then you just continue with a regular square by chaining three and then working your three double crochet into that spot. Um, slip stitching over and just continuing with um, the regular squares all the way across. And now that we have reached the corner on both sides, you're decreasing on both ends as well. And then at this point I can show you here since I am running, I ran out of yarn on my little scrap yarn. Um, if you run out of yarn on one of your bobbins or skeins, you can just go ahead and grab a new piece and then you add it in just the same way as when you're changing colors to so just drape it over your hook and pull through. 
And then I also wanted to show you guys that when you do bring in new yarn or switch colors, you can tie the tails um, that are next to each other into a knot. So make sure that you're not tying it too tightly and uh, messing up the stitch. But I like to tie it in a knot so that when I go to weave and ends, it is secure. I don't have to worry about them coming apart. And then of course, just from regular use of the blanket, or if you happen to wash the blanket, it keeps the tails um, nice and secure so your blanket doesn't start falling apart on you. So I highly recommend um, tying those tails together into a knot. So I'm just gonna continue along the row doing my squares and then I will show you guys um, again on this side um, the decreasing. I know once you keep going with the increases it can take a bit to get used to not increasing on the ends anymore. So I just wanna make sure you guys um, remember how to do it. So here we are at the end and then you just slip stitch in to the um, square from the previous row. And then slip stitch up the side. So three slip stitches, one into each of the double crochet of your last square. And then just slip stitch into the chain three space of your last square. And then continue on with your um, regular squares. And at this point you should be noticing your blanket is um, shrinking. You are losing a square with each row. So just like we gained a square count when we were increasing with each row, now we are um, losing a square and going down by one square with each row that we make. And then I am running out of yarn here for my little swatch that I'm doing. I'm just using scrap yarn from my actual blanket. Um, so I'm just gonna pull in another strand of yarn using this brown color that you will also be using in the blanket as well. Um, so I just brought that in and I'm going to continue working my squares. So slip stitching over, doing the chain three and the three double crochet. Okay, here I am at the edge of the blanket again. So I just slip stitched in and turned my work and I'm going to slip stitch up the side and we are getting close to the final row and I'll show you guys how to fasten off um, the blanket on that last row. Okay, so we are in our final square here. So I've just joined in, turned, and I'm doing my last chain three and three double crochet to complete the final row of the blanket. And then to finish off, you just slip stitch over into the square from the previous row like normal. And then um, you could fasten off here if you want, but I think it looks neater if you slip stitch up the side as well. So I just do my um, three slip stitches, one into each of the double crochets, and then work that final slip stitch into the chain three space. And then you can just fasten off your work. If you're um, making a border, you could continue um, and keep the yarn attached and work a border around the blanket, but I prefer mine without a border. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fasten off. And then here is our little swatch. So that is the bottom left corner of the blanket. There's the top right corner, and then the upper left corner as well where we just finished. And then all you have left to do is weave in all of the ends. So again, make sure you're tying the ends that are next to each other and loose where you changed colors. Make sure you put them in a little knot just like this. Um, you can see where I joined in the color here, um, just tied in a knot. And then you can weave in the ends through the backs of the stitches with your needle. And then this is what the actual blanket looks like compared to the little swatch that I made. So here's one of the mushrooms. This is the mushroom in the upper um, left-hand corner. 
And then here's what the back looks like. I'll show you those little floats so you can see they blend in really well. So you can see along the light pink there, there's a couple of the little floats and then as well as the um, dots on the mushroom. So with it all weaved in and when it's said and done, I think it still looks great on the other side as well. So I wouldn't worry too much about um, the floats. It's a lot better than having to weave in all the extra ends. Here's another one of the mushrooms and this is the back of the blanket as well. You can see the floats. So yeah, that is it for this uh, tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed making this little mushroom blanket. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or shoot me over an email and um, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.